dear student welcome to chemistry class today we are going to continue from where we stopped last class which is um which is titled um, acids bases and salts so we are calling this one part two because it's a continuation of the class so i like to remind you to always follow your normal um procedure by staying in a position comfortable for you to to learn that means in, in in an area free of noise nor distraction okay so we'll move to the objective of today so our objectives now the first thing on our list is that we must know at the end of this class we should be able to know and explain the formation of salts citing some examples along with it so formation of salt under formation of salts we have methods of preparing soluble and insoluble salts we actually started it last class but we are going to finish up and also under this formation of salts we are looking at testing for different salts and the other part of this objective is we must know how to calculate water of crystal crystallization so we have to know how to calculate the water presence in um, in a particular salt that's what it means so um this is the second one we'll be looking at the first one was acid reacting with meta which we explained that they are for non-reactive metals that you can treat you can um react in that manner so in the second one which is acid and carbonate don't forget our carbonate is co3 2 minus that's the radical ion okay this metal can be used with any metal carbonate and any acid providing the salt produced is soluble the typical experiment procedure is similar to that carried out for an acid and a meta. Okay, that previous one we did. For example, copper 2 carbonate will be added in excess to dilute nitric acid. Nitric acid is the same thing as a um, hydrogen triosonitrate 5 acid. Okay, so when you have this uh, dilute nitric acid to copper carbonate what do you have you observe that there will be effervescence effervescence means that it will kind of form bubbles okay there's some bubbles thereby some you you notice that gas is being what um evolved there's a gas that evolved there when whenever you have effervescence um kind of reaction when you have two things together you must know that a certain gas is being what evolved okay so here we have effervescence would be observed due to production of what that's carbon foreside okay when you write your equation you know before you can do anything you have to write it out write the equation so my question says how will you test the gas to show it was carbon foreside just like you normally use it in the lab, you can test for carbon foreside. And also write an equation of reaction to help you explain that is what is happening during the test you have chosen. Okay, so here you have the word equation, which is copper 2 carbonate plus nitric acid, giving you copper 2 nitrates plus carbon 4 oxide and water okay so this is the um chemical equation of the reaction you have to look it very well look at is it balanced we have every of our atom reacting there balanced that's one thing you must be sure of before you go ahead then the other one metal carbonate contain carbonate ion that's co3 two minus okay in this reaction carbonate ion reacts with um hydrogen ion in the acid so from here you have 2h plus then you have the um anion of the meta reacting with the acid forming what co2 don't forget what we said the last time this uh this 
will be a spectator ion just like we said uh, that means copper two plus and copper two plus here yeah, will be what copper two plus here yeah, on the left hand side with no3 uh, minus on this same left hand side which we are together to give copper nitrates they are spectator ions if you've forgotten you have to check back in the last class where i explained that so when the carbonate reacts with what hydrogen higher it will give you what that's when you have the effervescence being um happening there you have the um boiling overall evaporation of co2 gas that's carbon dioxide. so this the third one is acid plus alkaline soluble base Sorry, um, alkaline is same thing as soluble base, supposed to be in bracket there. So if you react acid with um, alkaline, what will you have? This method is generally used for preparing salts of very reactive metals such as potassium and sodium or sodium. Okay, it will certainly be dangerous to add the metal directly to acid to the acid in this case we solve the problem indirectly and use an alkali which contain a particular reactive metal whose salt we wish to prepare so in a nutshell you can add the base to acid there will be explosion in the lab so you have to put your base then you run you open the bullet and let the acid run through okay salt can be formed by this method only if base is soluble that's why we call it alkaline soluble base okay so example of soluble and insoluble base here you have you have soluble base which is called alkalines and you have insoluble base which are called bases normal uh, normal bases so you can look through and just see how to differentiate between the two so all the ones that the left hand side are soluble why would the ones there are what insoluble so because in this neutralization reaction both reactants are in solution a special technique called titration is required that's why you you, you find your tighter value in the lab because you have the acid and the base in what they are both in solution acid is slowly and carefully added to measured volume of alkaline using what burette until the until the indicator changes usually phenolphthalein changes color okay when you have strong acid and strong base that's what you use an indicator is used to show when alkaline has been neutralized completely by an acid this is called end point at the end point you realize that alkaline has been completely neutralized by the acid that means you have a ph of seven the solution which is produced can then be evaporated slowly to obtain the salt so you try to let the water in your salt go away by eating it slightly then when it's crystallized you can easily leave it for the little remaining water to evaporate so that's how you get your salts back so this is the equation of the reaction for sodium hydroxide and hcl strong acid and strong base so it will give you salts and water and this is the ionic equation here this is what we are really concerned with so acid plus insoluble base when you have insoluble base such as what this method can be used to prepare a salt of an unreactive metal such as what lead and copper in these cases um, it is not possible to use a direct reaction of the metal with an acid so the acid is neutralized using particular metal oxide okay and the metal is same for a metal carbonate and an acid though some warning of the reactants 
may be necessary. So here is the equation where you have the acid reacting with what? Insoluble base. Insoluble base, an example of insoluble base there is um, copper 2 oxide. So, which will give you copper 2 tetrahydrosulfate 6 plus water. So, this is the ionic um, equation. So, most method of preparing um, insoluble salts. Okay, how can you prepare insoluble salt? You know, last class we talked about method of preparing um, soluble salts. So, these insoluble salts right now. An insoluble salt such as barium sulfate can be made by precipitation. In this case, solution of two chosen soluble salts are mixed, okay, to produce barium sulfate. Um, this is what you do here. You react barium chloride with sodium what? With sodium sulfate. And what you it will give you is to produce what barium sulfate. So you can see it from here. So you know barium sulfate itself is not that soluble. It will just precipitate a little, and you can now filter it off, wash with distilled water, and dry. So here you have the barium chloride reacting with sodium what sodium sulfate to give you barium sulfate. These are insoluble salts. Okay, so this is the um, ionic equation, the ionic equation because more often than not, we are interested in the ionic equation. So the method is sometimes known as double decomposition. Okay, salts like barium sulfate dissolve to a very small extent. They are said to be sparingly soluble sparingly to a little extent they are not that soluble so that's why they call them that so number two acid and salt sorry acid salt you know last class we mentioned normal salts we have different types of salts we have when acid we are with base we have different type of salt so this is the second one in this one, this is a type of salt from when all replaceable hydrogen ion in an acid are only partially what replaced by a metal. In the normal salts, all the replaceable hydrogen ion of the acid is being replaced by metal. But here, you have insufficient of um, the base which reacts with the acid, so you have it. Uh, partially being replaced just like the first example a2so4 plus sodium sulfate will give you sodium hydrogen sulfate plus water so these are our um, acid salts for hydrogen tetraoso phosphate 5 which is partially neutralized to okay you have it as you know there are try um you have three three hydrogen ion here okay so because of insufficient base you have it just replacing only one mole of the hydrogen um ion leaving the other two without replacing it if you had another sodium hydroxide you realize that another one would be what replaced by the metal giving you what disodium hydrogen phosphate 5 okay same thing when you now have you have another set of sodium hydroxide neutralizing this you have a normal salt so in a nutshell this is an example of um acid salt the three of them when you now react with this you have your normal salt so basic salts that's the third one basic salt they are formed when there is insufficient supply of acid for complete neutralization of base e.g zinc um hydroxide chloride plus hcl will give you us zinc chloride plus water same thing as double salts which is supposed to be our number four Double salts occur when hot concentrated, um, hot concentrated equimolar aqueous solution of two simple salts are mixed in the ratio of their what? 
relative molecular mass e.g you have this you have sodium you have ammonium sulfate reacting with iron sulfate this is what you have eh so this will be your if you look very well you see that is equimolar of aqueous solution that you have you have um iron two plus and you have iron two plus here yeah? you have what ammonium ion you have ammonium ion and you have surface ion likewise you have surface ion so this is the fifth and the very last one which is complex salts are salts that contain what complex ion i Complex ion are actually ion consisting of what? Charge groups of atoms. E.g., a solution of ion 2 salts mixed with solution of potassium cyanide. It will result in the formation of potassium what? Exacyanoferrate 2 um, salts. So that's what you have. When you, you know, when, when you, you can still remember your chemical bonding, when you did, um, when you did um, coordinate covalent bonding, this is what really happened there, okay? So, testing for different salts. In salt analyzing, there are what? Simple chemical tests which allow us to identify the anion parts of the salt. You know, the cation part of the salt should be the metal, while the anion is the radical ion that is combining with the metal. So, for instance, so we call this kind of test spot tests. Okay, testing for sulfate ion now. We know that bar bar barium sulfate, from our previous um, knowledge, that barium sulfate is, a, is an insoluble salt. Okay, so... For instance, you have been given a salt, you don't know what is in there. So you take a solution of a suspected, you are still suspecting, you, you are not yet confirmed, you've not yet confirmed what, what is in there. So you take solution of suspected what? Sulfate. Okay? When you take it, you had, that's the second step, you had it to solution of what? Soluble barium salt. Okay, you'll be given that another barium salt which you had that very, um, um, what is it called, too. So, when you had it like that, you notice that a white precipitate will be produced, which is barium sulfate suspected. Okay, when you now suspect this is the equation. So, for you to now confirm, you had few drop of dilute HCl, that's hydrogen chloride acid, um, to that precipitation. When you had it, if the precipitation does not dissolve, then the unknown salt was definitely a sulfate. So that's how to know. Why it's, if it dissolves, that means it's not sulfate ion. Okay? Testing for chloride, bromide, or iodide. I'll just use a general test for them. So taking silver, silver chloride is an insoluble salt, for instance. So when you have silver chloride, um, you never knew it's silver chloride anyway. They will give you, for instance, in the lab, they say take a solution of the suspected um, chloride. So when you take um, that solution, you'll be given the solution. Then you had to read a small volume of dilute nitric acid, that's H HNO3, okay? Add small amount of um, solution of soluble silver salts, that's HGNO3. That one is soluble, this one is soluble, while this one is insoluble, okay? So when you had the... Um, the the parts the solution given to you you had HNO3 and you had again H um HGNO3 that's silver nitrates a white PPT of silver chloride is what you have in there so and you can write the ionic equation this way okay and if left to stand if you leave the solution to stand the precipitate goes gray. If the color changes to gray color, that means you have the anogen ion presence inside, either chlorine, 
uh, bromine or iodine so from there you can now differentiate between them so an alternative test for iodine ion if you want to check maybe it's iodine what do you do addition of what lead nitrate solution to the uh, suspected solution it will now give you bright yellow precipitation that's lead what iodide okay testing for carbonate this is the test for carbonate okay you had acid to the suspected solution effervescence occur um that means any 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 um compound having carbonate ion there will be um evolving of what co2 gas which is carbon four oxide will be produced and how will you know it's carbon four oxide you pass it through um lime water it's its own lime water milky that means you have your carbon ca calcium carbonate there okay so this test for nitrates in alkaline solution nitrates are produced are reproduced Reduce, I reduce, sorry, to ammonia and can be identified using damp um, indicator paper. When you put a damp blue or red um, litmus paper, it's a definitely turn blue. Okay, so crystal hydrates. Some salts like sodium chloride, copper carbonate, and sodium nitrate crystallize in their anhydrous form okay without water then a hydrates a hydrate is a salt which incorporates water into its crystal structure you know for solid they are all arranging crystal crystal um, shape so when you have them when they have water incorporates into this crystal structure you call them a hydrate okay this water is referred to as water of crystallization so this salt hydrates this formula cobalt 2 chloride is a hydrate these are to write it same thing with copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate same thing with this so just look through and just familiarize yourself with the um, formulas uh, formulae okay calculating water crystal water of crystallization how do you calculate it this is the um, equation for calculating water of crystallization so molar mass of an hydrous salt equals to mass of water divided by mass of an hydrous salt so let's look at that so here you have calculate the um, percentage of mass of water in salt hydrate salt hydrate the salt hydrate is named magnesium sulfate hexahydrate. So when you calculate that for uh, molecular formula mass of this compound, you have it to be 246 grams. And same thing with mass of water is 18 grams. So what do you think you are going to do? Mass of water, sorry, 7 moles of water will give you what? 126 grams. So, the mass of water as a fraction of um, total mass of hydrates will be 126 divided by 246. The percentage of water you now multiply by 100 to give you what? 51%. So, I, I hope the class is um, quite explanatory. I would like you to lay your hands on some questions before giving you class um, activities and involvement have a great day and enjoy yourself bye